Huge thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring and supporting this video. Max calls the base, Max calls the base, can you hear me? No answer. Imagine that you, as a future colonist of Mars, lost connection in some remote part of the Red Planet. The only way you can ask others for help is to assemble some simple transmitter and to get it as high off the ground as possible in order for its signal to quicker reach the nearest satellite on the nearest Martian colony. All you have got to do now is to design a small rocket motor and to deliver the do-it-yourself transmitter to Mars orbit. How can you do that? Hi everyone, it's me Toy Soy, and in today's video I'll show you how to assemble a rocket motor on Mars from materials at hand. First of all, let us see what types of rocket engines are out there and which type is the easiest to assemble in restricted and primitive conditions. Historically, the first rocket engine was as easy to make as a New Year's Eve cracker because it consisted of only one fuel tank filled with simple rocket fuel, which is black gunpowder. So-called solid propellant rocket engines are being used to this day, but they have a more complex fuel composition and also a more complex design. For instance, the Space Shuttle starter motors use solid fuel, consisting of a mix of ammonium perchlorate, aluminium and resin, which served as a binding chemical. Besides solid propellant rocket engines, there also exist liquid ones, which have a more complex structure, but they have a number of advantages. For instance, Elon Musk's newest SpaceX rockets have liquid propellant rocket engines, which supply two liquids to the engine from two tanks, that is liquid oxygen, which is an oxidizer, and kerosene, which is fuel. In contrast to solid propellant rocket engines, such engines have high specific impulse and can also be turned on or off at any moment. I think you understand that after starting such firework rocket motors, you won't be able to stop them until all fuel has been spent. When it comes to cosmic rockets with solid propellant engines, they don't have such disadvantages, but it's almost impossible to assemble them in primitive conditions without diagrams and expensive equipment. Of course, there also exist hybrid chemical engines, as well as nuclear engines, and so many other engines that have been designed. However, my goal in this video is to assemble a simplest motor from materials at hand. That is why I think, in Martian conditions, we can settle for simplest solid propellant rocket chemical engines, for instance, such as found in this firework. Hmm. First of all, we need to choose an oxidizer, that is chemical which will supply oxygen and make fuel burn fast. For instance, this firework motor uses potassium nitride, or as it is also known, saltpeter, as an oxidizer. But it's not that easy to synthesize this chemical in your own. That is why I'm going to use a stronger and easier to obtain oxidizer, which is sodium chloride. In case you didn't know, from a chemical point of view, this substance is equivalent to potassium chloride, or as it's also known, mertolid salt and it has been used as a strong oxidizer in match hairs for over 100 years. The only difference is that potassium in this chemical is substituted with sodium, but the properties should be the same. If we melt potassium chloride and mix it with something flammable, even with regular chocolate, all the organic compounds in the sweet will immediately start oxidizing in the oxygen-rich flux. But how can we synthesize sodium chloride in conditions resembling those of the first colonist of Mars? According to the Martian film, the main hero had an abundant supply of electricity because all the systems operating in the place where he resided ran on electricity. That is why sodium chloride can be simply be extracted from salty water using electrolysis. According to open sources, there are sizable deposits of frozen salty water on Mars, especially around the poles. But if you are not too that close to Mars glaciers, you can make salty water yourself just by mixing regular water with sodium chloride, 
or table salt. First, to obtain sodium chloride, we need to simply dissolve regular salt in water. It's better to mix 80 grams of salt in 1 liter of water, and when salt has been dissolved, you can start running electrolysis. But wait, it's not that easy. In order to run electricity through such a solution, you need to have electrodes, which are quite resistant to corrosion, because if you run electrolysis using stainless steel or copper, such metals will significantly disintegrate in such a medium and contaminate your solution. The easiest way to avoid this scenario is to use graphite poles taken out of old batteries, connect them to the positive and negative terminals, and pass high electric current of about 7 amperes through the solution. But usually graphite poles are too soft in batteries, and they also quickly disintegrate during electrolysis in a salty solution. Hmm, does it mean that this process is impossible in Martian conditions? I think it's quite possible, with the use of some chemical tricks. To do that, we just need to use electrodes from a rather widely used metal, in the field of space engineering, which is titanium. I think some casing or doors of the space stations are definitely made of this metal. It's quite simple to make sure that a metal is titanium. This metal is very hard and light, and it sparks a lot when rubbed against regular stones or concrete. After making sure that your metal is titanium, you need to take two plates or meshes. One should be used as an anode and the other as a cathode. However, if you start passing electric current through a solution with such titanium electrodes, you'll notice that in some time the current intensity as well as the voltage will begin to drop dramatically. This happens as a result of the process called passivation. The thing is, upon electrolysis of regular salty water, titanium starts covering is an oxide layer, which is a dielectric, which means that it doesn't conduct electric current and the process of electrolysis can be carried out. That is why to prevent this from happening, titanium is covered in a layer of other more stable metals or a mix of their oxides. For instance, titanium can be coated in a mix of iridium and ruthenium oxides, just like this electrode is. But this process is extremely complex and cannot be repeated in amateur conditions. That is why it's best to coat titanium in a layer of platinum. I think it's quite easy to do in Martian conditions, because there will certainly be separate mini laboratories for future researchers to carry out some quick chemical tests. In the Martian film, the man here has a handful of pure iridium. Shouldn't then the hero of my video have a couple of grams of platinum and some reagents in a separate compartment? That is why, in order to coat titanium in platinum, first we need to dissolve a small bit of this precious metal in aqua regia, which is a mix of nitric and hydrochloric acids. Because platinum is a very stable metal, it will take several hours and heat to dissolve it. After dissolving platinum, the leftover acid is vaporized, and the obtained hexachloroplatinic acid solution can be used to coat titanium. We just need to take a thoroughly rinsed titanium mesh or plate and to pass electric current through the solution. Titanium needs to be connected to the negative electrode and the other piece of platinum needs to be connected to the positive electrode. Thus, in a couple of hours, you can coat titanium in a thin layer of platinum, like that of this electrode. Well, we have the electrodes, a piece of titanium and a platinum coated electrode. Now we can obtain the main component of the rocket fuel, which is sodium chloride. It's quite easy to do. We just need to assemble a do-it-yourself electrolyzer, having glued electrodes to the cap of the container. After that, we need to heat the salt solution in water to 80 degrees Celsius in order to be able to obtain chlorates. Now, when it has heated up, I'm connecting my titanium to the cathode and my do-it-yourself platinum electrode to the anode. After that, I'm passing 8 ampere electric current through the solution. As we can see, there immediately start forming hydrogen and chlorine bubbles on the electrodes. To be more precise, hydrogen is being released from the titanium cathode and the platinum anode releases chlorine. It was chlorine that decayed many metals when used as an anode, and the platinum protective layer is proven to be quite durable. 
From a chemical point of view, when chlorine is released on the anode in the hot solution, it starts reacting with hydroxide ions of the other electrodes, creating the very chlorate ions. As a result, we can get a very strong oxidizer, sodium chlorate, using regular table salt electrolysis. Because of the high intensity of the electric current running through the solution, in some time it heats itself up and the temperature remains at 80 degrees Celsius by itself. Of course, this whole process should only be done under a fume hood and with a sodium bicarbonate sodium gas absorber in a separate container, because the released leftover chlorine isn't beneficial for health. Synthesis of chlorate is a rather lengthy process and takes about 5 days. If you keep passing electric current through the solution, you can get an even stronger oxidizer, which is sodium perchlorate, but regular chlorate should be enough for do-it-yourself rocket motor. By the way, according to the latest research, there have been found traces of those very strong oxidizers in the Martian soil, magnesium and potassium perchlorates. Unfortunately, they are not very suitable for rocket fuel, and just like all chlorates, those are very toxic chemicals. That is why, most probably, it's a bad idea to grow potatoes in Martian soil. After 5 days of electrolysis, all sodium chloride in the solution has turned into chlorate. Now we need to vaporize the excess water and get a dry oxidizer for our rocket fuel. After vaporizing all water, we can taste the chemical we have obtained. To do this, I have mixed some sodium chloride with a small quantity of sugar and set the mixture on fire. It burns well, just like chlorates are supposed to burn, but still this doesn't look like rocket fuel yet. That's because the components need to be finely ground. That is why, first of all, I'm pouring sodium chloride into a coffee grinder and I'm grinding it into fine powder. After grinding, the oxidizer needs to be mixed with some fuel, but it's exceptionally dangerous to use sugar or sugar powder for this purpose, because rockets that run on such fuel are very prone to exploding. That is why, having reviewed the old archives, I have found a great safe fuel for my do-it-yourself rocket. To be precise, I am going to use regular silicon sealant. I think there will certainly be several such tubes at the space station, because silicon is very often used as a sealant in spacecrafts. They maybe have a leak and silicon will come in handy. If we mix silicon with sodium chlorate, choosing the right ratio and stir the mixture for quite some time, we'll get such a roll. I have made a tasting batter, weighing about 10 grams. I'm wondering how it will burn. Yes, it seems like the fuel has turned out to be great. It burns well, and besides, it's safe to work with, because it doesn't spread dust and it's not very sensitive to heating and rubbing. For instance, upon mishandling, some fuels containing potassium chlorate can detonate. That is why such semi-liquid mixtures with silicone and or another resin work really well. After successful test, we can make more do-it-yourself rocket fuel. To do that, I'm putting the leftover silicon from the tube and also almost sodium chlorate into a container and giving it a good stir. After 20 minutes of stirring, the texture resembles that of dough, but this dough is quite flammable. Now, while this mixture is still semi-dry, it needs to be put inside the motor case. We can use such a hollow cardboard roll to make several cartridges. You can also use some PVC pipes or aluminum tubes for this purpose. I'm going to use a manual press and some special appliances for pressing the mixture into the tube. Also, alternatively, the future colonists could use some pipes and poles available at the spacecraft instead. First, I'm going to make a regular end burner rocket motor without a nozzle. To make it, I'm stuffing my do-it-yourself rocket fuel into the cardboard tube. It's quite easy to stuff it. And, several minutes later, the cardboard tube has been fully loaded with the rocket fuel. Now I just need to make a thick plug on one end of the motor, in order to be able to better direct the propellant force. For this purpose, I decided to use epoxy resin, which is also supposed to be present on any spacecraft for some emergency gluing. In order to plug the motor in one end, I'm just pouring 10 milliliters of each of the epoxy resin components into the dead end of the tube 
and leaving the resin as well as the silicon-based rocket fuel to harden for a full day. After that's left to do is to wait for a couple of days until everything hardens and we can start testing. Well, some time later I can finally test my motor. To start my motor I'm not going to use some wig. Instead, I'm going to use a more technologically advanced option, which is electric igniter. It's quite easy to make, we just need some cable, a USB cable will work well. We need to pull out the two cords and strip them on both ends. We need to separate off one wire from the rest and attach it to the other cord. Then we need to place a regular mesh in between the cords. After setting everything into place with electrical tape and securing it with heat shrink tubing, we can ignite our electrical mesh with two 9V batteries. It works without fail, because electric current of over 5 amperes passes through a tiny wire, which is why it heats up and ignites the match. I'm curious to know whether my do-it-yourself igniter can set on fire the pile of leftover rocket fuel. Yes, it works as well as a watch, that is why we can start testing my do-it-yourself motor. For this purpose, I have made such technologically advanced pole and attached my electric igniter to it so we can test it out. Yeah, it burns quite well, but it seems to me that it burns too slowly. Simply pressed fuel in a tube doesn't create the needed pressure, which is why the burning speed of our fuel is too slow. To fix this mistake, I have made a couple more motors with new fuel and this time I have created a special channel inside the motors using a metallic cone. Thus, when the fuel is ignited, it will burn on all sides, enlarging the burning surface and increasing the pressure inside the motor, which will significantly increase the propellant force. Nowadays, almost all solid propellant rockets engines have a channel inside for increasing the engine's efficiency. The only thing worth remembering is that fuel needs to be pressed as neatly as possible in order to prevent accidental explosions upon further use of the engine. After drying for a couple of days and making a plug, now we can test this modernized rocket motor. Having ignited fuel, we can see that the burning speed has significantly increased, which generates a propellant force. If I make a nozzle for this engine, install fairings and stabilizers, when launched, such a rocket can fly half a kilometer. I think if attached some receiver to it, Martian colonists in trouble will be able to send a distress signal to the nearest satellite or space station on the orbit. Such a rocket can reach an altitude twice as high on the red planet, because the gravitational pull there is 62% lower than on Earth and there is almost no air resistance because of the thin atmosphere here. In the end, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video. Squarespace is an online website building platform with limitless business opportunities. Build communities, promote products and sell them worldwide. Exclusive content for platform members help you generate more revenue and communicate more effectively with your audience. Much more, you can add even more functionality to your Squarespace by installing Squarespace extensions for inventory taxes and accounting. Go to squarespace.com as the link in the description, check out the free version, and once you have tested it, click on the squarespace.com slash toysoy2 and save 10% on your first website or domain purchase. So, I think after watching that video, you'll know how to make a do-it-yourself rocket motor in Martian conditions. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see many more new and interesting.